Your Excellency President Yudhoyono, ministers, ambassadors, leaders of business and of civil society, distinguished guests, Bapa Bapa dan Ibu Ibu Sekalian. It is my great pleasure and honor to welcome you to Forests Indonesia, alternative futures to meet demands for food, fiber, fuel, and Red Plus. When my colleagues and I at C4 first began planning this event, we never imagined that we would receive so much support from across Indonesia and indeed from around the world. Today we've gathered an amazing group of the nation's leaders and experts, policymakers and heads of business, civil society advocates, and partners from other countries to discuss the future of Indonesia's forests. When we first started thinking about this event, we thought that our, in our wildest dreams, we might attract an audience of 800 participants. As of this morning, we have more than 900 registered, with many participants downstairs watching this morning's speeches carried live. This incredible show of interest and support reinforces my belief that Indonesia is at a crossroads in the management of one of its greatest natural resources, forests. I've been following forestry issues in Indonesia for more than 25 years and have never before seen such an object of high-level political attention either here or internationally. Substantial financial resources have been committed to forests from government budgets, from multilateral agencies, and from philanthropic organizations. The private sector is investing as never before in sustainable forest management practices in response to new market opportunities for sustainably produced products and for new products such as forest carbon. President Yudhoyono, your bold pledge in 2009 to cut Indonesia's greenhouse gas emissions showed that Indonesia is willing not only to contribute to the fight against climate change, but to lead that struggle. And your presence here today shows that even though commitments to address climate change from some governments are being eclipsed by the economic crisis, your commitment remains firm. I know that all of us applaud your government's many actions toward better forest management to achieve your emissions reduction goal, such as the many efforts underway to implement the commitments articulated in the letter of intent with the government of Norway. We all want to support your objectives of reducing rapid deforestation while meeting domestic imperatives to expand the economy, to create jobs, and to guarantee food security. And yes, there are some win-win opportunities. But I think we all understand that meeting these commitments will require some hard choices. There will be trade-offs, there will be compromises, and leadership from government, business, and civil society will be required to determine a way forward in a manner that is both transparent and fair. And that is why we are all here today. The primary purpose of today's conference is to create a space for open and honest discussion among the key stakeholders who together have the power to shape the future of Indonesia's forests. This conference is very timely from a domestic perspective as the controversies, for example, surrounding the moratorium and other policy issues continue to be debated. Government officials, business leaders, and civil society representatives need an opportunity to understand better each other's perspectives and expand the areas of consensus on what needs to be done and by whom. Another purpose of today's conference is to reach a better understanding of how the international community can help. In Oslo in June, I heard Minister Solheim explain how Norwegian citizens would be outraged if a delegation from Indonesia arrived to tell them how to better manage their oil industry. So he and others here today from abroad are not here to tell Indonesians what to do with their forestry sector. But the global community is a stakeholder in what Indonesians decide. And it would be grossly unfair to ask Indonesia to take on this agenda alone given that many of the pressures on Indonesia's forests are driven by international trade and investment. Thus, President Yudhoyono's pledge in 2009 to cut emissions appropriately had one target if the country acted alone 
and another more ambitious target if it received international assistance. We at C4 are trying to do our part by providing the information and analysis needed to make informed decisions about the options and implications of alternative pathways to reconciling forest conservation and development. But we also believe that this conference is timely from an international perspective. As many of you know, the United Nations has designated 2011 as International Year of Forests. And today we mourn the loss and celebrate the life of Wangari Mathai, leader of the Green Belt Movement and winner of the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize. Although she lost her battle with cancer two days ago, she had won the battle to place forests and the people who depend on them firmly on the global agenda. And we're only two months away from the UN's annual climate change negotiations, which will take place in Durban, South Africa. And we'll make sure that the key messages emerging from today's event will inform the world in Durban what it needs to do to assist Indonesia as it makes the tough choices necessary to safeguard its forests. As we have all read the newspapers or watched TV in recent weeks, whether regarding the budget crisis in the United States, the Euro crisis in Europe, or the Middle East crisis at the United Nations, we've been reminded that political leaders are seldom rewarded for thinking long term or for asking their constituencies for compromise or short term pain. As a result, we are all dependent on the few visionary leaders with the courage of their convictions to lead us to a better future. Indonesia is fortunate to have such a leader. As President Yudhoyono proved with his 2009 commitment to reduce Indonesia's emissions and subsequent actions to do so by protecting Indonesia's forests. Bapak Bapak dan Ibu Ibu sekalian, it is my greatest honor and privilege to introduce President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono to give the keynote address. Mr. President. <laughs> 